Hi guys, uh, good evening. Uh, Shubhendu here from Skelenza. Uh, welcome back uh, to the second webinar session of uh, Amazon Thumb Up Hackathon. As promised, uh, uh, we uh, that we will have sessions on uh, uh, certain themes and topics, right? Uh, we uh, promised that we will have deep dive sessions on on some of the themes, and we thought that NFT is an interesting uh, new theme, uh, right? Uh, this is the new world. and we uh, wanted uh, to do more deep dive so we have uh, three experts with us uh, i'll introduce them uh, shortly uh, right? they have done lot of work around that three around blockchain and around nft so uh, they are here to guide you on how to approach this new uh, technology and how to contribute as part of the hackathon so welcome uh, again guys uh, so we have uh, uh, three speakers with us uh, very young talented engineers who have been in this ecosystem for, uh, for almost 2 to 3 to years more than 2 years uh, and uh, they have done a lot of amazing stuff uh, when it comes to nfts and and blockchain uh, so i have uh, uh, our first guest uh, vishwas uh, uh, with me vishwas bhushan so he has been in this nft ecosystem for last 3 years he runs a company called codemeyer which uh, Uh, is into a gaming ecosystem, so they create games for uh, very popular apps uh, like Paytm uh, and uh, other other players. And uh, off late, uh, Vishwas jumped into the world of NFTs and has uh, spent considerable amount of time in designing NFTs, helping artists to launch their own NFTs. Right. So he's the right mentor for you today. So he'll speak about uh, his journey and also how you guys can approach this uh, problem statement. and uh, uh, soon he is going to launch his own uh, startup in nft plus gaming ecosystem it's a very interesting concept uh, we'll do a little deep dive when we uh, present uh, uh, the more next slides uh, we have uh, his co-founder shanu uh, with us uh, she is also co-founder of codemeyer uh, so along with vishwas they are building this nft games and they've been kind of in the nft nft ecosystem for a, for a for more than a couple of years now and our third speaker third and last speaker pranav uh, is a good friend uh, i know him for almost 2 uh, uh, years now uh, is a young engineer uh, works for uh, graph protocol has been part of polygon also and uh, he has a lot of depth on blockchain ecosystem so i whenever i have a question around blockchain i i reach out to him so so uh, like i said i promised guys we have uh, three of the best mentors you can have uh, you can expect or you can think of and they're here to guide you uh, before i start uh, the session today uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the hackathon itself right so this hackathon uh, just to remind you uh, uh, recap uh, this hackathon is part of uh, amazon sambhav conference uh, this is an annual conference that amazon does uh, uh, to kind of excite uh, the small and medium enterprises uh, show them the possibility of uh, how they can use technology and uh, how can they digitize themselves how can they Uh, make their business grow by using certain applications and technology right and it has been very successful hackathon so uh, uh, we uh, we have seen amazon doing great stuff during this uh, uh, conference and as part of the conference uh, annually we also organize kelenza organizes a hackathon along with amazon to show the world what can be possible uh, for the indian sme community when we use technology right and uh, in this uh, 2022 why not web3 right so we we have an amazing theme uh, as part of the hackathon which is nft for indian artist we'll talk about it right and uh, this hackathon uh, has started the registrations are already started we have close to 17000 registrations already on the platform and if you have not registered please go and uh, check out the hackathon on skelenza.com and register today form your teams invite your friends to be part of it the the main thesis of the hackathon is that you have to think innovatively you have to think big right and pick up one of the themes right we have three themes one of them is nft and do something interesting right we had this hackathon last year we had amazing participation and we are expecting nothing less than that this year also uh, so coming to the first theme uh, this is uh, about uh, nfts right if you guys are aware of the web3 ecosystem uh, the blockchain uh, technology has a lot to offer and nft is being one of uh, those technologies that a uh, lot of people are leveraging right uh, right is is solving the the problem of ownership right how do you own a digital product right you might have uh, an image uh, that you have posted on instagram somebody else can copy it right download it and say that it's mine you have a design put on some platform and somebody can download it and just sell it off right so how do you solve this ownership problem in a digital world as we are more digitizing our our creations right how do you solve it right so nft solve it and i'm not the expert here we i have three amazing experts to talk about it so we'll do a little deep dive into it but the idea here is that 
how do we take the concept of nft and use it for indian artists right marginalized uh, local communities where they struggle to make money how do we give them this new concept so that they can make more money they can earn more revenues right so uh, let's move to to uh, to the, the basic question right what are nfts right uh, vishwas let's start with you uh, what do you think uh, uh, nfts are right uh, like how how do you explain it to a 5 year old kid uh, or or let's say your grandmother right how how can we simplify nfts yeah so one of the most popular and one of the most uh, uh, asked questions of nfts what is nft and what are nfts point is like nfts are nothing but a non fungible token now people will gonna say wow <laughs> we know that uh, non fungible token but what is it exactly is the point is like nfts uh, is nft can not uh, uh, can be anything it's just not an art it can be anything it could be a music it could be a art it could be a, a random picture it could be your code anything can become an uh, nft the biggest example is uh, we friends version 2 recently launched and they have uh, uh, published a game as an nft so uh, anything can be an nft whatever you are putting or whatever you are listing on a blockchain or uh, and there are multiple blockchain for example ethereum is one of them near is one of them tezos is one of them so if you are listing anything in that particular blockchain so that can become an nft and uh, for example if you if you ask me like uh, can i just uh, um, uh, can i just uh, make this pen into an nft turn this pen into an nft obviously you can do you just take the uh, pictures of it and uh, uh, list it on uh, ethereum blockchain or any other blockchain and put some utilities on this particular pen even if this pen get destroyed that particular the uh, pen you have listed on ethereum blockchain will be stay there and the utility whatever you are providing to that particular nft will going to grow utility can be provided in terms of uh, with the community if the community is super excited for example if this uh, you have created a brand for this particular pen then yes uh, uh, community will going to take your uh, brand to the next uh, level and to the next level and to the next level you you uh, you started selling uh, you started saying that okay uh, whoever owns this particular nft we will be like giving you uh, the physical copy of this particular pen and that particular pen can be created only 40 in the whole world or uh, like only 40 editions uh, can be created uh, in the whole world so that is also uh, some kind of rarity because we have seen the things which uh, have been doing previously that for example these cars are only two in the whole world but those cars uh, contains value those cars are rare but they are not listed on blockchain so their value can be decreased but if i list this particular pen for one ethereum the value of this particular ethereum for that particular token will be remain one ethereum until or unless someone come and flip for 0.0001 so yeah this uh, this is all about a basic part of nfts uh shubhendu you are mute i guess yeah so pranav and shanu uh, uh, would you like to add something and uh, also uh, uh, pranav can you throw some light on the picture that i have put on the slide <laughs> <laughs> it's a board ape yaj club right and uh, i would say i i would like you know try to define nft in a different way i am really very much dri dri driven by philosophy and i think philosophy is the thing that eventually is implemented in terms of tech and so that we can pre uh, present the future right i think non fungible tokens technically people understand is a non uh, you know is is like a utility it's like okay it's erc721 and it's like one of a kind can exist on on the internet but why what what is like you know what was the need that we created nfts and one of these bode piaz club is worth a million dollars uh, one of the jack dorsey street is worth about 90 to 285 million dollars or something like that what made these nfts valuable what are nfts in general which is something new what is something that nfts have unlocked in the whole new you know era of internet i would say it is ownership up till now everything that you had on the internet was owned by you no not really it was owned by google amazon all these fangled tart companies and they rented you out for some kind of a model that's like known as you know you request something and you get a result request result model that's a really really broken model because if the worth of what you're asking 
is more than the worth of that particular company or organization they will just create a default of it right and that is the reason why you needed real ownership in which you own that particular thing in your particular you know dimensions without anybody having any attestations or claim to your particular uh, you know uh, asset in the internet for example if you think like uh, instagram profile that is not an nft right but you own it you think no you don't instagram people own it they can any day could uh, put you down and you know you will be uh, you will not be able to claim it back whatever policies you know they go for however when you go for something like nfts and you create a social uh, you know media and you have a profile in an nft and you own that particular profile then you own it fully all the monetization to from every bit to every bit is owned by you so i would say non fungible tokens as a concept is your ownership in the piece of internet your ownership in the digital world it is the last piece which actually makes uh, you know uh, internet really something as cool as something in the physical world in the physical world if you own a painting it's owned by you no neighbor can claim it right Uh, but in the digital world it was not possible as of now but non fungible tokens make it happen and now we can say that really right the physical world can be converted to digital world and we are getting into an era of metaverses so that's 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 my two cents to nfts thank you pranav shanu you would you like to add something yeah sure uh, i would also like to add that anything that lies on the blockchain as a transparent uh, it is like completely transparent you can see the ownership that who owned it at the first who created it and there's an entire transaction that you can see but if if i talk about uh, centralized part then you are creating the con- uh, content for all the other platforms you are creating content for algorithm like if you are putting something on instagram on youtube on facebook then as pranav said that is not owned by you you are putting that on a platform and that platform can any time delete that stuff and you like there won't be any trace that it was owned by you created by you and anything like that yeah got it cool thank you so to summarize uh, what i heard was right uh, that when nft is basically a piece of uh, digital uh, or a physical thing or it kind of joined to a digital uh, uh, thing right where and that is listed uh, or Uh, the uh, on a ledger right on a, on a digital ledger which is called blockchain and it's written that it's in your name right and once you own it you can move that piece around uh, the digital world and the internet and and just the way you mimic right i if i own a car i can take the car and move around bangalore or in delhi right so which is saying that hey this is my car i can take the car and i can go around it but if i uh, but in in case of a social media i think that i own the own the data i think i own my profile picture but it's not at that case right but in a in a blockchain world in a web3 world we will own stuff right which is what nfts are and we can move around it right from one platform to other right if you want to put it like that cool uh, so uh, moving to the next uh, piece right so if if people are creating nfts right if, if there is something that you own uh, there is a possibility that i can change ownership right the way i have a car in physical world i can sell a car uh, to somebody else right or i can gift a car to somebody else or donate a car right Uh, so if i do that i want probably i'll go to cars 24 or spinny or car deco right so are there platforms uh, where uh, these nfts uh, can be sold and bought so let's uh, start with shanu yeah there are multiple nft platforms multiple marketplaces where you can list your nfts uh, like there are multiple for example the most uh, po- uh, popular is opensea then foundation there is paras which is on near blockchain Uh, OpenSea and Foundation they are on Ethereum blockchain. So multiple blockchains have their own multiple uh, marketplaces where you can list your NFTs. You can create a collection out of your NFT. Um, all like where you can list as many NFTs you want in an in a collection. You can list a one on one NFT if you want on a marketplace. So there are multiple marketplaces that is OpenSea, Rarible, Mintable, Foundation, Paras, and the list goes on. Got it. Cool. Uh, and uh, pranav uh, uh, these uh, so uh, basically if there is a marketplace so there is something that the marketplace would take right that that's called take rate there is a commission that they will charge so uh, uh, is is it also relevant in the blockchain world in the web3 world are these uh, marketplaces taking some commission uh, as you buy and sell nfts uh, 
Right. I think I would want to like, you know, analog it to the Web2 world, right? In the Web2 world, you own a particular car because that, uh, you know, plate number has your ID attested to it, right? That means that car is owned by you. You have all the claims in the physical world for that particular thing. Similarly, in this, you know, Web3 world, your address, your, you know, your account address has the ownership of a particular NFT, right? Does that mean you have to get that listed on OpenSea? Does it have to be indexed and blah, blah, blah? The answer is no. It's not mandatory to have your, you know, address listed to OpenSea, your NFT listed to Rarible or those kind of things. It's on you and your particular judgment approach, whether you want like, you know, your uh, particular uh, NFT to be listed or not, right? That's the first myth that I would want to burst that if you have an NFT, you want to have it on the OpenSea and stuff like that. You can just create a ERC-721 contract and have a, you know, uh, NFT given to you and it is never listed or it is never indexed by a particular blockchain, uh, a particular contract, a particular marketplace, right? That's the first thing. Secondly, there are different, different blockchains Unfortunately, all of them are not interoperable and you can create your NFT in any of these platforms. For example, you can, if you are like, you know, trying to uh, be more efficient with the NFT transfers and, you know, making it a utility, it might make more sense to have it deployed on something like Solana blockchain, which have it, will have its own address and eventually will have, you know, a NFT attested to it, right? That's why most of the sound, you know, uh, NFTs, like even Audius, is uh, as is a platform which is listed on Solana, and if you have a particular uh, particular let's say sound, you know, uh, music that you have composed, you can attach that to that particular address on Solana blockchain. If you have something which is really very valuable, and you think decentralization is important, so that you know nobody hacks it and it is with you without any problems, let's say crypto punk or let's say board API club, you would want to have that on ethereum and there are you know different different marketplaces attested to that if you want to sell them then you have them you know linked to that for example OpenSea or all these and also near and other blockchains are coming around to make this happen right so does the protocol uh, below it right that is like the ethereum transactions that happen do they charge a fees to have nfts traded the answer is no but the front end lying upon it that is OpenSea has created a front end upon the protocol that is Ethereum that charges the commission of 3% on all the NFT sale that happens around them because the protocol is decentralized. Even if OpenSea wants to have a token of its own or if Rarible has a token of its own, they don't charge a commission on the protocol. But the front end, which is a centralized entity, which might be listed in USA or some other place, will have a fees attested to it because that's their revenue model to eventually like, you know, create value out of things. So most of it, how it works is that, you know, um, to keep it, uh, keep the business going is that they have a protocol which has a token and they have a platform which has a fees to, uh, for that particular, you know, protocol to be used. So that's how it works. It's not mandatory to use that particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, platform uh, to skip the fees. But uh, if you want, you can use it. You can just use the protocol and still be able to trade without the 3% or whatever commission that is charged by a particular protocol. So again, as I told you, NFTs are awesome, but because there are so many technical and you know complicated things attested to it, it is very much important to demystify before we jump right in and you know make some laws and say, this is all a scam. Got it, got it. Cool. Thank you, Pranav. Uh, so uh, that brings to, uh, like you mentioned that the, obviously the platform, the marketplace which is selling has a fees, right? But Vishwas, uh, uh, just like if I want to own a car, I have to go to this uh, uh, transport department, uh, attest my car, right? Uh, pay a fees, pay a registration fee. If I want to buy a house, I pay a fee, I take a stamp paper, I, I give some taxes, right? Uh, so is there a fee that I have to pay if I want to build an NFT, like say that I own yeah. this NFT, is there a fee that I pay? Exactly. So the point is like uh, whenever you uh, deploy your contract, either on uh, OpenSea or Foundation, market, Maker's Place or uh, Super Rare, Known Origin, you need to uh, pay the gas. Now, uh, all these marketplaces, how they play a major role and why they are like uh, 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 fixing a bigger issue because uh, most of the people do not uh, they are not able to deploy their own smart contract because they are artists 
uh, everyone is not a developer so uh, there are few uh, uh, few approaches like manifold which is helping you to create your own uh, smart contract and recently a foundation has also started doing that when you have to create your own smart contract you have to create your own token and that will be your contract previously it was it used to be a foundation or open sea contract but uh, and open sea has still the same thing but uh, if you just uh, deploy if you, if you if you if you create a collection or if you create a contract on foundation then you will be seeing that particular contract on everywhere the way you are deploying the contract but yes whenever you deploy any contract you have to pay the gas fees and that gas fees is the amount you are uh, paying to list your particular collection or to deploy your particular smart contract on the uh, particular blockchain it could be ethereum it could be near it could be tezos it could be solana it could be cardano anything so there are different different marketplaces of for example uh, if you ask about uh, the ethereum so ethereum has huge number of marketplaces or and each marketplaces have different different kind of thing for example usually people uh, uh, to mint their one on one art people uh, go for foundation or super rare or known energy or makers place or uh, uh, nifty gateway Nif uh, for Nif nifty gateway as well they they use nifty get uh, gateway at the same time but uh, uh, let's say like if you have a huge collection a collection more than 50 or uh, 100 nfts so what they do is they just deploy on uh, open sea and they use the smart contract of open sea uh, because there they just have to pay gas fees for once you know, Got and then they can just uh, create five collections and they can add multiple NFTs and they can list multiple NFTs. So it, it will be more like whenever someone is minting, then that time that particular NFT got uh, going to be list. Previously, it will not. So Got the whole point is that is why OpenSea plays a major role uh, uh, because uh, uh, even like Rarible also started uh, providing a lazy minting. So the lazy minting is uh, all about that. But yeah. Uh, if you ask about the Hiketnan, Hiketnan is a Tezos based uh, ma a marketplace uh, and uh, Versum recently launched and they are doing amazing. Versum has been used for the one on one art for Tezos marketplace uh, for uh, for the Tezos blockchain. If you talk about uh, Mint base, so Mint base is actually based on Nier and Mint base is used for uh, uh, one on one art mostly. And uh, if you talk about Paris, so Paris is more like OpenSea, you know. You, you uh, pre mostly people uh, meant uh, 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 PFPs over there, and uh, uh, big projects uh, they used to mint on Paris based on the near blockchain. Soul C we have, so there are tons of uh, Soul C is more uh, completely more like a, a Solano based uh, blockchain, and it's more like a Open C uh, kind of thing where the whole so uh, Solano based NFT you can actually find. So, but all these things you have to pay the gas and these gas varies varies for example in ethereum the gas uh, price uh, uh, you have to pay the gas according to the GUI. the uh, you can just go and check the what is the gas uh, uh, prices uh, like you can track the gas uh, price right now and uh, based on that you have to pay the gas amount for example if the uh, if the gas is too high uh, if, if if it is more than 100 GUI, then i uh, uh, just suggest you do not mint right now you can mint later <laughs> got it. so uh, so you, so basically to summarize uh, there are there is a fee that uh, an artist or a creator has to pay when they are uh, listing their nft on a blockchain the price dif differs from blockchain to blockchain and also differs on a particular day right uh, depending on the day and the hour right uh, and uh, once they want to sell it they did not uh, list it they can just uh, uh, privately sell it also but just to, I think, get more exposure, get more popularity, uh, you want to list it on a marketplace so that there are there is more visibility, there are more eyes looking at your uh, create the creation at your digital art, so that you can sell it uh, right to a bigger audience, right? So that brings us to the the third question, right? So why why have become why NFTs have become so much popular, right? Uh, what happened, uh, right? So Pranav, if it'll be great if you can uh, start the uh, session. Uh I would say, like, you know, eventually that is how maximalist culture works, right? It's like initially it's just, you know, the, 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 what we call as the 
the weird people working on a particular protocol trying to understand the basics and why something should exist and create something out of it which does not have value in terms of monetary but has a lot of value in terms of why it should exist that's how also nfts in general started right i would say crypto punks was one of the first uh, well known you know uh, lava labs creation that became popular but eventually when we get vcs and you know suit good people around the whole ecosystem that's when uh, lots and lots of waves are created around a particular ecosystem so i would say they were started nfts were started to create to uh, well separated art about something it's like you know very well uh, segregated and very well uh, piece of internet you can own as a thing and you can create you know digital paintings uh, sound uh, create a whole social media around that but eventually what happened was as of now they are getting popular because of you know let's say people's pleaser art being sold for 80 million dollars or something like that so it started off because it was needed for the web3 world to actually progress or what we call as the next internet wave to actually start with but as of now there is a lot of noise that exists in the ecosystem and that's why there are many nfts and many nft marketplaces i've seen i, I, I like you know when i see them i'm like fucking laugh because it's like you know they don't have contracts it's just an image which is taken as a photo and people are trying to sell that because that they think that's what an nft is and this is their uh, like you know moment to become a millionaire it's like copy paste save upload the same image and try to become that's not how it works you have to understand the fundamentals of technology try to promote the fundamentals of why they exist and eventually you know there is a chance that this green pill or the public good as a technology that's created will give you results same as the web2 world git was a public good git was created just to like you know make sure people can upload uh, work and also do lots and lots of like you know coding work and things like that and have uh, a version attestation to it and eventually github could take you know profits out of it that didn't mean that git was not you know very awesome technology github was the one which actually monetized git and now github is the one which is popular similarly right now nfts as the fundamental core were created to become owner to to have ownership of the internet and are now becoming popular because they are being sold for hundreds and millions of dollars not why because they existed but i think people who come and even like right now all the nft artists who come in the ecosystem uh, i hope all the indians who come into the ecosystem should first understand the fundamentals of why nfts existed there are hundreds of examples of 2018 19 i can give you there is a person known as people's pleaser uh, she was like you know she minted the uniswap video people bought it it was like millions of dollars and she donated all of it because she thought that all the wealth in that you know uniswap video was a public good and not something she should be owning the web3 you know psychology the way to think through it is not a get rich quick scheme nfts are not a get rich quick scheme they are a fundamental requirement to make web3 a decentralized web happen and that's not what they are popular for but if you understand why uh, why they should exist then i'm sure they will make profit for you got it cool so shanu uh, do you agree with pranav that uh, uh, nfts uh, became popular because uh, probably because of a uh, lot of backing of mm-hmm. investors and a lot of hype in the media but the true power of nft is something else right uh, what, what do you yeah. think yeah yeah i totally agree with pranav and uh, i i also believe that it started and it's it is still in hype because people think that why a piece of image that's a god api club why it's being sold for like 800 million dollars and why is it being sold so uh, like i can just screenshot an image and i can just uh, sell it myself so i've i've been across with these kind of people and uh, if you want to come into nft then i agree with pranav that you need to understand the fundamentals of uh, nfts why do they exist and apart from that uh, like nfts are the building blocks for entire a new ecosystem that is being created in web3 got it 
so to summarize these are like uh, the building blocks uh, like any um, platform or any new product web3 is going to create yeah got it cool thank you so i think to to summarize uh, uh, right uh, the nfts uh, should be popular should become popular because of their usability the way they are going to power the next uh, generation of internet right the web3 not because of the financial returns but obviously with uh, like any new concept new um, uh, idea uh, uh, the ones which get more heat and get more popularity is where there is more financial return right it, it happens with all the industries and i think as uh, you know, the froth or uh, settles or the bubble bursts we will have real uh, innovators like like you guys who are building uh, stuff uh, using nft for the real use cases right not just to do buy and sell and and make quick bucks so uh, uh, that brings uh, me to the next question so vishwas uh, uh, i guess uh, you have worked with a lot of indian artists you are helping a lot of creators to launch their nfts uh, what what do you think is there an apprehension in in the uh, nf the indian creator ecosystem that they don't understand nft uh, why why is it not popular why don't we have a board uh, ape uh, version of india indian thing nft that is becoming more popular right so what's the road block there oh so uh, we have uh, uh, an indian version of every nft is listed you know because uh, we have actually created like someone i have seen like some indian punks are also there some tau punks are also there so <laughs> we have there but uh, it is not that popular because of few reasons when i started nft an year uh, an year ago i it all, it all started with uh, with uh, with a uh, instagram uh, story that okay someone sold his nft for 120k and that was the nayan cat by chris chris is uh, one of our good friends <coughs> and uh, that uh, was the first cake the second was the people who sold for 69 million dollars and then people will be like looking forward to it people were looking forward to that particular aspect because they were create they started creating the nfts but but these people are not indians very few people get a chance to explore the nft world most of the indians do not try because they have to pay a lot of amount of gas fee there were no such uh, marketplace like hikat nan were available where you have to pay the less amount of uh, gas people uh, people are afraid of using or buying cryptos uh, using their uh, credit card or upi because they think that okay because when i started i thought okay like i'm not uh, putting my money because i have to almost buy 100 dollars which is uh, and that time i was on uh, i was a student so <laughs> so when i started i i, I was like okay why should i uh, buy this because i have to pay the gas fees and i'm not sure that i'm going to sell the nft so then i did some research and went to uh, mintable there you can just mint your art uh, without paying gas and the whole point is uh, most of the time people uh, like uh, uh, the problem with the indian uh, artists right now they are they are the needs are an exposure they needs a proper uh, guidance and they needs uh, uh, like how to explore this part what are the things you how you can do and what are the things you can avoid because sometimes it feels that okay i have created an nft now someone are like like most of the people are like okay i put because i put uh, a, a, a month of time to create this particular art i am going to put 100 ethereum as the valuation of this art and in the very next day i'm going to sell this particular art and i, I will be dry and i will be riding a lambo uh, uh, next week the mentality is like that but the point is until or unless uh, you create your brand until or unless you interact with the people until or unless you uh, uh, make yourself appear in front of the community that okay you are here i know that you are a, uh, you are a great artist but you are not so popular that for example you are not pablo escobar that okay pablo escobar if, if pablo escobar was hearing and if i say okay i am going to drop my nft right now right away people will going to go crazy about that because he has already a brand with him 
but if 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 uh, if an indian artist and if an indian creator wants to join the nft uh, then they should come and explore the different different market places they should not start with ethereum they should not start with tezos they should not start with near if they are not feeling good about it for example if someone doesn't have uh, uh, enough uh, ethereum to pay the gas they can actually start with uh, uh, they can start with tezos because they 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 have to pay less amount of gas fees there uh, they, and which is less than a dollar they can start with uh, near where uh, uh, they can start uh, where they can mint the whole art in less than a dollar so they have to explore they sh they should not limit for example uh, most of the time uh, it also happen that uh, creating nfts are easy selling nfts are hard very hard so tons of people join but most of the people just give a uh, give up in the between like they are like okay okay this is uh, this is something uh, this is a scam this is all about uh, money laundering this is a cash grab this is all about conditions and if i do not have a, a, any of that then i am not going to make it and uh, i will be suffering point is when you create an art you have to interact you have to create your value you have to uh, make yourself comfortable and sometimes it also happen that you have created everything but still you are not selling then you have to decide like okay this particular platform so for example uh, it had it, it has happened with me when i started uh, on foundation after 2 months i was not able to sell any uh, not even one piece of art and i i i started having a imposter syndrome so what i did i just created a uh, an art i'll just listed an art on hegatnan 1000 editions and i put the price 0.01 just to check that okay my art is something got sold out 1000 editions then i said okay this is not about my art this is all about like the way i am uh, uh, sh sharing my work with the people i was shilling like crazy i was not building my brand for example if you uh, it happens that when you when someone is saying hi and if you say that okay buy buy this pen can you please buy this pen for me so that that is the thing uh, right now most of the people are doing they think that shilling is the only way to sell your art but that not for example interact with the people talk to the person a good conversation can create a good connections and a good connections can create uh, uh, a good say so uh, that's why like we are lagging we are uh, missing the fact that that uh, it's just not about like just create the nft list it on uh, some blockchain and start shilling you cannot do that you cannot sell it because it's your art your emotions are uh, uh, connected to that particular art whatever you are selling it could be anything but you should tell people that why you created it what are the emotions which are attached uh, to you with that particular art or with that particular nft and why you listed it what are the thoughts behind it what is the story behind it tell people because they love to hear and that's how we are going to make it if if we if we share about it uh you are mute mute yeah so pranav and chanu uh, uh, would you like to add something uh, so Chanu, yeah uh, yeah so uh, i also like agree with vishwas but i would like to say that in india nfts are popular like they are uh, popular as much as they are popular in uh, in the entire world but i think people in india don't know where to start because i have came across a lot of people who told me that they are an artist and they want to start their nft journey but they don't know how to do it so uh, so like they are literally confused that uh, like they don't even know what an nft is but they know that uh, nft is some kind of art through which we can uh, earn money and like make some amount of money but they don't know like what an nft is how can i list it and what value can i create and they don't even know that they need to use twitter to understand what a uh, what the entire web3 community is doing so most of the people i know they are trying to uh, build a community on instagram on youtube out of uh, for the entire web3 for learning what an nft is but i think they should rather focus on uh, twitter discord and telegram got it pranav anything uh, else i would i would i would like you know i would like to put in a different stance to this i don't think it is about india and india like in gen in general like you know 
Indians are shilling NFTs and the other world are not. If you go on any Discord and you join the Board API Club Discord, you'll find 100 DMs in which people will say, can you buy this NFT? And those are not Indians. They are normally some other people. And the reason behind that is because uh, Web3 in general is not geography specific. It is very global, right? If you, whenever you come to Web3, the first thing is like, you're trying to create a protocol for the world, living wherever the hell you want to live, right? That's the first stance that given. Similarly, in the NFT space, it's not like, you know, Indians are taking the wrong approach of making things work. But the main point is that like technology came late to India, right? Awareness came late to India. People were a little late educated about this particular thing. Similarly, uh, in the West, people came to know about OpenSea because it is their native product, you know, came to know about MetaMask, how to interact with it, how to like, you know, eventually make an art piece and being able to sell it accordingly. While in India, it took, uh, it, it will take time because the awareness and education to going through this whole, whole process is tough because for an artist, what he does is he's not a Web3 engineer. He's not a Web3 community person. He's just an artist who creates awesome, uh, you know, arts which have really good thinking behind that, right? But because he's not able to, like, you know, technically upgrade himself, it is creating a little bit problems on those ends. If he understands NFTs, he, he understands MetaMask as a tool, if he understands these, you know, different, different chains, the first thing, whenever an NFT artist comes in, like, Overflooded, uh, over flooded with examples like you know Tezos, Solana. What's the difference? Ethereum. Oh my God! I go on Ethereum with MetaMask. If I'm going on Solana, I have to use you know Phantom as a thing. How do I get my first uh, uh, you know whatever uh, one Ethereum in that particular thing and then start trading about it? What are the risks involved? And you know, can I get my NFTs uh, sold or my MetaMask hacked or things like that? There are hundreds and hundreds of steep learning curves involved for an artist because as an artist, I just want to sell my art. I don't want to learn these hundred things. I just want to, I just don't want to sell my art. I want to create art. I want to like, you know, portray it to the world. This is what I've created. And if you want to auction it out, auction it out because of a value that it might have. So in general, digital art requires a really good amount of education for an artist to upbeat and upcome. And because of this, you know, difference of like, you know, getting to learn, there are many people in between who are not artists and have taken advantage of it. They buy a digital art and because they know how MetaMask works, they are engineers like me who are not creative at all. And they try to sell their own particular thing, being Indian or whatever uh, race or origin they are. And that is the problem. When real artists come into the whole ecosystem with these awesome NFT marketplaces with less barriers like Coinbase has created an NFT marketplace, like what Wazirx NFT marketplace is doing or what like, you know, these new toolings to upbeat a particular person without any, uh, you know, previous knowledge is coming. I would say that would empower the real NFT artists to come in. And definitely, I think, as I told you right now, NFTs is more about noise than the actual use case it is actually belonging to, right? There are going to be hundreds or hundreds of use cases which will empower you as an artist, maybe being, you know, a digital artist or a sound artist or something else, or, you know, you, you, you're going to get a real value out of it. But you need to understand a steep learning curve of what Web3 is, how NFTs are, and how do you, like, you know, make things work. I would also say, like, you know, Indians are, again, Indians are not at all, uh, you know, those plebs or those kind of people. I would say currently they can front run because we are programmed to actually learn mathematics and eventually be good at technology. And I think this is our way out because if you're selling an art, you're not Indian, you're not Western, you are just an address on the whole, like, you know, on the whole uh, marketplace. You don't have an identity at all. And that's the best part about Web3. You don't need to KYC like you know what you do in, uh, in in the current world and that's why we might have an edge because of you know this gender racial discrimination doesn't exist in web3 and also uh, people's pleaser art 60 million dollars were bought by an indian we uh he's like you know he used the inner name known as meta Cohen and eventually told that he's we sundaram i met him he was also the ex-founder of landroid and things like that right so it's not like Indians don't have money. Indians don't have talent. Indians uh, are doing all the wrong things. I would say it's just like 
technology uh, reached late in india this whole web3 you know uh, awareness and the skill to making things work is taking some time to come up and when it comes up i would say the real artists will create value right eventually when they understand that why it should exist and why are they you know belonging to this whole thing so yeah that's that's my two two cents cool thank you uh, i think this slide needed a uh, uh, lot of attention and you guys have done the justice because this is the the theme of the hackathon right we are talking about the real problems that indian artists are facing and how our hackathon participants can solve for it right to summarize uh, in fact uh, 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 that's what i wanted to talk about uh, the next two slides and you guys have almost covered it right uh, to talk about sample ideas that they they can bring is like like pranam mentioned uh, there could be uh, more marketplaces which are more simplified for the new digital artists right like vishwas and shanu suggested there these guys don't understand uh, the ecosystem so there could be tooling where they can uh, uh, create nfts quickly right no code tools without any knowledge of uh, engineering or coding uh, they, there could be a lot of education content there could be uh, learning sessions there could be uh, applications where digital artists can uh, understand nft right and as you said right they go and uh, sell at wrong places right they have to be storytellers right there should be tools for them to become storytellers there could be ideas around uh, how they can leverage twitter or some other platform a new platform itself to become a better storyteller as an artist right so these are some of the ideas that that we discussed with our panel today so uh, if you guys are listening uh, to all participants who are listening uh, these are areas to attack education of uh, education learning uh, upliftment of the uh, indian artist right that's one problem statement making them a good storyteller making them a marketing person from a digital artist right what uh, vishwas mentioned you have to be a good storyteller you have to sell right and good stories sell right so how do you make them good storyteller so what product ideas can be built right how do you leverage twitter discord can there be tools to leverage twitter in a better fashion to to uh, make a community out of your uh, nft right and uh, and to pranav's point there could be new marketplaces which are very simplified for for our indian artists right so there are these are some sample ideas guys and uh, you know, i would ask you to uh, kind of think more innovatively i mean these are ideas that are you can say placeholders we were just discussing uh, so that you get an exposure to the nft ecosystem but don't restrict yourself think beyond uh, that so guys i'll just quickly go through some of the slides uh, which will uh, cover the hackathon itself uh, just to recap the hackathon and then we have bunch of questions that people have been asking us on the youtube and uh, linkedin feeds we'll start taking those questions so uh, uh, nft is the the first theme the second theme is financial inclusion uh, trying to address uh, the uh, the bharat right the users uh, in india the bharat users right how do we we innovate uh, financial products for them that that's a bigger problem as we innovate that use case uh, people will come uh, to internet they will have uh, uh, basically uh, uh, their own bank accounts their own uh, wallets right and they can then probably um, uh, participate in the nft ecosystem right so that's that's all linked right we want more people to be on internet we want more people to be on web3 right? it's all linked and that's how we have kind of uh, created the theme uh, the third theme is business innovation as i mentioned some of conferences about uh, small and medium enterprises so how do we use uh, uh, technology and coding to build tools for our our uh, local merchants to uh, for our kirana shop which is nearby our house how do they leverage technology and become more sophisticated right give more better user experience serve their customer better track their revenue so there are a lot of ideas there we have amazing startups working on those front so we encourage you to think uh, out of the box and come up with better ideas in the hackathon uh, just to quickly uh, go through uh, uh, the timeline we the, the registrations have already started uh, we are encouraging people to form teams pick up the theme and and start building their product we have this amazing sessions uh, one of them is happening currently uh, on the nft we have two more sessions uh, that will happen uh, in the coming days one is on aws so if you're not expo uh, don't have exposure to aws that's the session to attend and then obviously a great hackathon right pranav uh, a great hackathon is only won by a great product right so that's why we are uh, stressing a lot on product design uh, so we'll talk a little bit about it uh, during the q and a session uh, so how do you design great products how do you uh, kind of you can say uh who the judges who the amazon team with with your product and and win the hackathon right win it big and and how much uh, uh, do you win right it's it's, it's a great amount right? it's 15 lakh across different categories so we encourage everybody to team up and and uh, 
put their thinking hat, put their coding hat, and build some of these products. Some of the um, NFT products that uh, our panelists have already mentioned. Uh, go beyond that. Pick other themes if you like. Uh, this is the judging criteria. Just to quickly uh, recap, um, obviously uh, there's an idea phase, uh, so we are encouraging everybody to submit their idea. We want everybody to submit a prototype, uh, and we will uh, focus on. Uh, you should use AWS as part of uh, the hackathon. Uh, what, how much your product is scalable? How much you have completed? Based on that, we will select top ten ideas uh, for the final demo, which will happen online. Right? Uh, it's a complete virtual hackathon uh, of the Sumbuff hackathon, and then uh, based on uh, those uh, ten ideas, there will be a final demo day. And uh, these are the criteria, right? Obviously, we we want uh, the products to be complete. A hackathon, uh, which is which does not have a complete product, is not a hackathon, right? So you, we encourage everybody to create complete products. Uh, uh, as we have uh, touched upon, the, those products should impact whether it's uh, Indian artist uh, in case of NFT ecosystem, whether in, uh, it's the uh, Bharat users or the SMEs, right? The the impact, the business impact should be high. Uh, obviously, we are targeting a different kind of uh, user today, right? We are targeting Indian artists like Madhubani artists, right? Uh, people who uh, uh, who come from the smaller towns in case of uh, the financial products, right? So we want the user experience to be different. You cannot compare it to a very sophisticated Web 2 or Web 3 user, right? And uh, like Vishwas mentioned, uh, whatever you do in life, right? Whether you are an artist selling digital products, NFTs, whether you are a founder raising money, whether you are an engineer uh, trying to uh, um, suggest uh, your uh, product manager or your engineering leader that, hey, we should have this uh, product uh, feature, right? You have to be a great storyteller, right? So pitching and demo is, is what we stress a lot upon in, in our hackathons. In fact, we will have a demo. Uh, uh, before the demo day, we'll have a training session for all the 10 teams so that they can become great at pitching. And that's how most of the started uh, startup pitches happen, right? So that's one of the factors. That's one of the judging criteria. And then uh, uh, obviously the completeness is, is what we want to see, right? So if you're not registered, I'll encourage you to go and register today uh, and scan this QR code to get uh, access to all the AWS resources, right? So that's all from my side. Uh, let's take questions, right? Uh, so we have uh, close to 10 minutes, so we, we can take questions from the audience. So um, uh, you know, first question to you, uh, Pranav. Uh, uh, it's a little um, um, political, but but I, I will nonetheless ask it, right? Because you worked at Polygon. So uh, which one? Um, uh, is a bet, uh, better platform for NFTs? The question is Ethereum or Polygon? <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was one of the initial engineers at Polygon. And all my heart goes to Polygon. As of now, I think uh, to India, uh, to the real, uh, like, you know, uh, I think Polygon is one of those companies which is introducing the real Web3 to India, right? I went to eat Dubai and all these places and I interacted with lots of people from different you know, countries which are not that developed, Bangladesh and Pakistan. And they don't have the real meaning or understanding of what Web3 is because they don't have examples. And we have we already have Biconomy, EPNS, uh, Polygon and all these, you know, what Wish is creating, these awesome people to look up to. So I think like we are really, first of all, like, you know, I think we should uh, really, look, you know, look up to these particular companies as well, first of all. And secondly, I think uh, the, to, to answer your question, eventually, right, it's, it's a little, again, technical. I don't want to go that technical, but I want to tell you that if uh, eventually the Ethereum foundation just wants to be a settlement layer, it does not want application to be deployed on Ethereum. Everything should be done on a layer two, right? All the information, what all the you know application deployment and everything has to happen on L2 while the security will be taken care of by Ethereum. So because of that and Polygon's ZK wars coming around, I think you know for a futuristic sense as well as you know uh, the as as it is told in the Web3 world, this year is for L2 L222. I would always suggest you to deploy your you know, application on a layer two. And Polygon is one of those leading L2s being an Indian artist and Polygon being uh, from Indian you know, co-founders. I think we can play that much Desh Bhakti to <laughs> support around and move forward. And in general, as I told you, technically as well, Ethereum Foundation just wants to be the settlement layer while application deployments should happen on a layer two. Ethereum being L1, whatever Polygon or these things being L2s. So, yeah, I would suggest you to go for Polygon. 
or any of these entries <laughs> thanks bana for the answer i think it was done nicely uh, and, and 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 i i totally agree um, uh, ethereum will obviously power all the settlements uh, going forward and are based on your use case right whether you are building nfts or building games or you building other uh, defi applications you have to find your own l2 right that's the choice as a builder as an engineer creator you have to find so that's where you go deep deep into those l2 protocols and find which is useful for you but uh, the um, i think the question is now which l2 is better right i think that that is what the, we need to all find and and seek uh but uh, i think the the debate is over now ethereum versus other uh, l2s right so uh, uh, shanu uh, i have the next question for you uh, uh if if somebody wants to learn more about nfts what are the resources right where, where do they go are, are are there good tutorials on web uh, like how do they start get started on nfts uh so as an artist you can uh, either start creating pixelated art you can start creating 2d art you can start creating 3d art if you are good uh, good with blender or like any tool that you use if you are good with photoshop adobe photoshop you can start creating art you can even mint your photographs if you are a good photographer as a nft you can like if you are a good artist if you have something that you are really great at then you can mint that as an nft i myself i'm a photograph uh, like i'm a photographer so i've minted multiple photographs as an nft and apart from that if i talk about tech point about uh, the development of blockchain of smart contracts and all those things then uh, there are multiple resources available on internet and youtube is also uh, like a great source where you can learn about it there is also uh, one more that is build space they they are providing a great resources right now if you want to learn about creating smart contracts if you want to learn about creating generative arts uh, arts using code so you can uh, look up to that that uh, they have uh, great resources right now Good. Thank you. So, Vishwas, uh, I have a question for you. Um, some Archana has asked: uh, uh, Are NFTs a good investment, right? And what is the risk, right? If you have bought an NFT or you are getting into the buying and trading of NFT, what's the risk involved? Starting with D U Y O R. So the point is, do your own research. That is the most important part. And yes, like it is a good investment if you invest in a good NFTs. How you will gonna find the good NFTs? based on uh, like do your own uh, do your uh, do your own research you have to go to the twitter you have to check how active the, is the community you have to check the road map you have to check the background of the artist you can see that how uh, artist is creating the values inside the community and if you own it or or you just if you if you're just an art lover for example i create i collect one on one art and i do not uh, and i do not want to sell them because i love art so for example i if i collect any art from any artist so i am not like uh, uh, collecting that particular art to flip it most of the people do that i invested in nft projects as well so but and those nft projects i just, when i invest in nft projects i do my own research and then spend my ethereum on that if i collect art i just collect it because i love art so the whole point is if if you if you want to just uh, invest in nfts do not do not invest in some fake byc who looks the same and who are offering 0.0001 ethereum and you will be like what the fuck i got a discount over here so uh, you do not have to invest in uh, such nfts do your own research to uh, uh, analyze the things so it is all about the way you buy the stocks you analyze that how will this stock will gonna give a good return or a bad return the same way nfts are gonna like uh, uh, when you invest in nft you have to do your own research it's more like when you want to uh, collect an nft or when you want to invest in an nft start with a, a sm uh, small nfts or start with a tezos nfts or near nfts see what is going on over there because there you do not have to pay Three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, or some one Ethereum or two Ethereum. You can just learn, and you can channelize. Okay, if you are just uh, putting five dollars and ten dollars, and uh, you are learning the things, obviously. And uh, if someone asks me, like, uh, what is the amount? Should I uh, uh, should I uh, lock to invest into the crypto or NFT? 
the amount you are ready to lose the amount you are ready to lose only that much amount put Makes- to buy the nft and uh, to sell the nft it's more like that because sometimes it also happened it, it has happened with me i bought an nft blue tech nft 0.2 ethereum right and the value is 0.01 so <laughs> the point is the amount you can afford to lose uh, only that amount you should put and do your own yeah. research thank you wish um, uh, i think uh, they say in the mutual fund ads right uh, it's subject to market risk right so do your own research uh, it's always good uh, read uh, follow on twitter go to communities talk to people right and uh, try to fo- see uh, you can say try to find new gems then just follow some uh, some trend and some copycats right i think that's a, a good advice uh, uh, so uh, this brings uh, uh, us to our end of of the session uh, we will not take a lot of time of yours i, I know you guys are doing amazing stuff uh, in the web3 world and and we need more engineers and more builders like you uh, now before we end the session uh, uh, how do you guys how do uh, these people who if they are looking to build something in nft they are looking to participate in the hackathon how do they reach out to you what's a good way to reach out to you guys uh, is it twitter is it linkedin so if you can uh, uh, mention uh, that uh, that'll be great so if 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 anyone reach out uh, to me or if they any if anyone wants to mint their first nft uh, here's my offer i'm going to take care of your uh, gas fees if you are minting on paris so i'm going to like whatever amount like if you are if you are thousands or 10000 people and if you are indian and if you are want to start your nft journey over here and today i'm going to help you with every possible way not just with the gas fees with multiple th- other things at the same time for example how you should start what you should do and if you uh, if you want to reach out just reach out to my twitter because that is the best possible way you can reach out or you can find me even if i give you my phone number you cannot get a reply because i am not there <laughs> i live in whatsapp uh, like i live in twitter i just live in twitter because twitter and discord are the home right now so right. If, if you if anyone wants any kind of guidance they can just reach out uh, to my twitter and sure. if they want to uh, start their own nft career cool so pranav is twitter good for you uh, if people reach out to yeah. your twitter okay twitter, Shanu, twitter would be the best uh, for think... me as well and it's, it's like you? not just nft yeah yeah, yeah so, twitter, uh, twitter is the best like all, all those right. people who are not on twitter i would suggest to get on twitter <laughs> so i think the web3 world lives on twitter uh, i totally agree i, I spend a lot of time on twitter nowadays uh, so uh, we will put all your twitter handles on on the chat so that uh, the participants can reach out to you for mentorship for uh, understanding the nft ecosystem and obviously uh, like pranav mentioned it's just not nft you can reach out to pranav for everything blockchain everything web3 right Uh, Shanu and Vish uh, have been spending a lot of time on the NFT ecosystem, so talk to them. And uh, uh, before we end the session, thank you guys uh, for spending time. Uh, it was a lovely session. Uh, I got to learn a lot about the NFT ecosystem. Right, I'm looking forward to interact with uh, more with you guys and uh, possibly have you uh, in our uh, judging uh, panel and and possibly talking to the hackathon participants more in the coming days when they start building out their product. Right. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, have a lovely evening. uh uh and uh, see you soon bye everyone bye bye